What's going on YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatch finally back with another video here and we're going to do a quick pickups video. I I don't think it, I've made any in maybe about a month or so. So there's a few things we've been missing and I'd been planning on releasing my week in the life of video series last week, but then um, from out of nowhere I pretty much had to dust off an old movie script I'd written back in the 90s out in the mothballs and kind of repurpose it. So I pretty much just writing all week long and just working on that thing so that kept me from finalizing the last couple videos and I really didn't want to release the series without having a video a day and having a match up with the day of the week so I had to push that back again and a lot of the pickups and everything that I've gotten you know a lot of those were in that week so I didn't want to show you what I had picked up before unveiling it in that video so it'll be a little um sporadic there'll be some things missing here that i'd love to show you but we'll wait for that video series to drop and also uh thanks to everybody for entering in the star wars contest for the digital download and poster but uh steve o mark d uh brian s and the one the only 4k cinema hd were the winners so thanks so much for entering the contest and hopefully you dig your copy of star wars i'm sure you already have like five copies on blu-ray anyways but uh so yeah, so let's tear into some things I've picked up over the past month or so. Um, we'll start with music. And there is a vinyl release, but I did get it that week. Um, so we'll save it for the video. I did finally pick up the new uh, Anthrax album, a little lousy with fingerprints there, For All Kings. And it's got a cool little slip cover there. Shoutouts to John Denae from, well, was Shadows Fall, but, you know, it's also technically Shadows Fall, I guess. But, uh... Landed the role as a lead guitarist in Anthrax. Very cool. Local guy, so uh, it's awesome that he's in Anthrax. Um, also picked up a, a Best Buy kind of promo uh, tying into the release of For All Kings, a Breathing Lightning single, but it has a couple uh, couple bonus tracks, live tracks on there, so I figured I'd grab that. And I hate super complex digipack. Yeah packaging so of course i had to just take the disc out and put it in a, a slim case i also finally picked up a physical copy of high on fire's newest album from 2015 <laughs> but uh luminiferous it's got a song called the falconist which is like one of the coolest high on fire tunes ever um such a slacker i had the digital copy but i didn't mean to pick up a physical for a while and then filled in my gaps for uh james bond discs a little bit um there were two John Barry scores for the Bond series that I did not have, mostly because they were my least favorite, um, you know, Barry scores of the series. But I did finally pick them up. The Man with the Golden Gun. These are the the remasters from EMI from uh, 2003, and uh, this was the one that surprised me. Diamonds Are Forever. Actually, I like the music on this disc a lot more than I like the music in the film. Um, there's a lot of really cool themes and stuff in here that I, I didn't really think about it. And really, I enjoyed listening to this. So, very cool. I'm glad I picked that up. Also picked up the uh, Digibook version of the new Amon Amarth album, Jones Viking. And uh, it's got a bonus track called Vengeance Is My Name. Cool disc. It's even got uh, Dora Pesh doing guest vocals on one track. So, super excited to get that. And what else do we get? Let's go. Let's go videos. Finally got around to picking up. Super late to the party, but The Martian. And no, I didn't get it in uh, 4K UHD because I'm not excited about buying a new 4K projector anytime soon. So uh, I'm going to deal with my ye old 1080p projector for quite some time. Um, my wife also picked up a, a used copy of Olympus Has Fallen. So. Could theoretically get ready for the sequel since uh never got around to watching it so fuquatic um this i actually bought for my wife i meant to get this when i first uh dropped which was so uh, what year was this reissue 2014 but scream factory's uh collector's edition of ginger snaps and i'd been looking for a copy with a slip cover for a while and i just happened to find it used and snapped that up see what i did there and she appreciated that i also picked up the sequel, Hotel Transylvania 2, still a lot of fun. I had a good time with this, and uh, I liked the addition of the vampire character and uh, some of the 
wacky hijinks going on there. Still a big fan of Steve B. Semi's Wolfman. And then I hit a, uh, actually the last day of my week in the life, I really wish I had brought a, a camera, but I went to the, um, actually it was the day after the final day, but I went to the first day of the flea market that they have at one of the local drive-ins, and I picked up a couple um, dollar DVDs, the Dragon Dynasty rendition of Hard Boiled, one of my favorite John Woo films, and I do have the Criterion Collection DVD, but this has different extras than the Criterion Collection DVD, so that was uh, a worthy pickup for a dollar. And I had this on VHS, this uh, Fox Lorber, uh, was it, Windstar version of John Woo's The Killer, but I never had the DVD copy, so I picked that up, and... Uh, really really nice looking it's got some good extras on it and uh, i was impressed it's a little sun faded on the side but what do you want for a dollar um but yeah really cool stuff and it's got you know commentary track on there i believe it's the commentary track from the criterion laser disc so when i also picked up a couple two dollar blu-rays including uh one man i've been meaning to buy this for ages but i never have and i've got so many different versions i've got the version on laser disc i got the version on dvd but now i've got Digital Video Essentials HD Basics on Blu-ray. And it comes with all the you know, filters and all that stuff. So you can tune your system. So I'm glad to have an official copy of that. I also picked up, now that there's a, yet another reissue of this film, but the uh, multiple versions of the classic 90s anime Ghost in the Shell 2.0. There's a newer version that's been rebooted with new CGI and then it does have the original uh, version as well. So pretty cool stuff. I mean to check this out. This commentary track from Omori Oshi and uh, some new extras and stuff. So more versions of Ghost in the Shell. Why not for $2, right? I also picked up, I finally just crumbled. I was keeping an eye on the whole X-Files situation because I figured sooner or later these corrected versions of Season 8 are going to be hitting store shelves. And... Uh, I was checking out Digital Bits, and there's this one site that's really keeping a running tally of all the changes and what you have to do and and, and how soon Fox is, is handling replacements because Season 8 was mastered too dark, apparently, or there's a glitch that makes it play too dark. And uh, then the last I saw was, oh, don't hold your breath waiting for copies to hit the market. Just buy it and then trade it in. So I said, eh, I can still get it for 12 bucks. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger on the X-Files Season 8. So I got it, and uh, I still haven't checked it out yet, but I'm assuming it's got the uh, the darkness glitch, so I'll have to send in for some new versions. Also picked up something I'd been holding off on for far too long, and I just crumbled again, because it was a big box set that came with like two CDs and you know a monkey and all sorts of stuff. But I also just really wanted to have it on Blu-ray. Devin Townsend's Retinal Circus, an amazing performance, uh, narrated by Steve Vai, um, Annika von Giersbergen shows up to do a lot of the songs she sings with uh, Devin Townsend, just amazing, crazy stuff, it's, yeah, like a Broadway play, meets metal, meets gospel, meets all sorts of stuff, um, so yeah, a lot of tracks on there too, so very happy to finally pick that up, and, uh, had to say yes to this. Uh, the Price Was Right, and it's a film I really enjoyed, The Hateful Eight. So I got it with a cool little gatefold slip cover there, and looking forward to viewing that film again. And also very late to this party, but I was holding out for this version. It was a Target exclusive with a bonus, a special feature, uh, talking about the Toho character. But yes, the Target version of Godzilla, again, just a waiting game, and found it stupid, stupid cheap, so uh, decided it was time to pull the trigger on that sucker. Um, what else? Oh, yes, I was sent a uh, nice review copy of this flick called Star Wars The Force Awakens, so I'll be talking about that shortly as well. I enjoyed it quite a lot, and it was nice being able to watch it again from uh, scratch. And a couple other review copies I got in the collector's edition of Death Becomes Her. Again, review forthcoming. And just got this one in the mail. 
Looking forward to it. Sharkensaw Women's Prison Massacre. It's not just Sharkensaw. It's not just Sharkensaw Women's Prison. Sharkensaw Women's Prison Massacre with uh, Tracy Lords and many others in there. So look for a review of that coming up soon, too. Also picked up some uh, reading material. I don't know uh, what what double dipping I have done or not, but I did get issue 9 of Fight Club 2 and the finale, issue 10 of Fight Club 2. And, of course, right now that I finish these, they're going to reissue them all in a trade paperback, so you can pick them up. Um, but I was impatient, really wanted to read them along the way. Gets really crazy at the end and completely meta. So I'm going to do a full review of those because I'm such a huge Fight Club fan. Uh, also picked up uh, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. I may have shown that in my previous uh, video, but I don't think I did. So killer artwork as always. And speaking of all things Turtles, uh, my buddy Freddy sent me a very cool work in progress book that he had put together. Batman TMNT work in progress and uh, it was super cool to give uh, give my band a shout out in here so awesome cheers Freddy you are the man and also tripped across this every time I think this series is dead it just keeps showing up again but uh, Alien Legion on Civil War actually got Carl Potts back involved uh, writing and uh, Larry Stroman uh, doing the art, and so I got issue one. I also found uh, issue two and issue three. And these are going back to 2014. I, I just keep forgetting to keep tabs on this because I know this property keeps, um, you know, living anew with new little mini series and stuff like that. I, I you know, I have to say. As much as I love Spider-Man and Batman and all the iconic characters and everything, like when I was growing up in the 80s, like my favorite comics were Dreadstar and Alien Legion. I absolutely loved Alien Legion. I had the poster on my wall about every single issue. I, I, I st really love the original artwork, too, from that first series. I like the, the way these guys have their style, too. It's a little bit looser, and, but I'm the first, was it Frank Scirocco? killer stuff and uh so I've, I've just treasured alien legion i always wanted to see a tv series made or something like that never happened but um yeah and ever ever since it left it was an epic comics thing and it left there and it kind of was rebirthed uh, from titan comics and every once in a while there's like a new series or something like that so i really have to remember to check that out i also <laughs> stupidly just discovered that howard jakin went back to doing shadow comics a couple of years ago and uh yeah, I, I completely missed that series. So now I've got to go pick that up because I was a monster fan of Howard Chaikin's Shadow in the 80s and the Bill Shankevitz stuff after that and uh, Andy Helfer. And, oh, man, that stuff is so good. So, yeah, like my favorite comics of the 80s were, you know, of course, like Batman Killing Joke and Year One, um, Frank Miller's Ronin and, you know, Alien Legion, Dread Star, The Shadow stuff just ruled my universe back then um so yeah there you go and i did pick up a new book for very very cheap i didn't get a chance to pick up the book i want my mtv when that came out giving you a big whole history behind the birth of the channel but i did grab this vj the unplugged adventures of mtv's first wave and it's all about mark goodman alan hunter nina blackwood and martha quinn and jj jackson who had actually passed away before the writing of this book, but it's still part and parcel of the whole experience. And if you're of a similar age group as I am, you just lived your life around MTV in the early 80s and, and beyond. And these were the only five people on the planet doing this video jockey job that had just been invented. Um, so yeah, they were in all of our living rooms, and it's an amazing book. It's not really very narrative. It's not very structured. It's not telling you... Uh, from the, I mean, it does have a lot of history about how they were chosen and what they were doing before, but it's all just in uh, very easily digestible, like little scattered pieces. Each chapter is usually just a couple pages, and it's just broken up by topic. So you could tell it was just somebody dropped a video camera in a room and just let them go at it for a while and just transcribed all that information. I kind of broke it up into uh, easily digestible segments, but it's a fast read and really, really cool, and it's having me flashback. To 80s like crazy and now i have to really get back on the stick and start 
um, finding some of my VHS tapes and transferring to DVD. I, like I just did uh, some Night Flight episodes not too long ago from USA Network and uh, Tears for Fears guest VJ hour from MTV from 1985. That was really cool. So, uh, yeah, this thing will have you feeling super nostalgic for the early 80s again if you were of my time period. So, highly recommend checking that out. And uh, that's about it for pickups for now. We'll be back with some uh, more Spotlight videos and Blu-rays, and I still have to show my speakers that I picked up recently, and a few other, th few other goodies. So, sorry for the little absence for a week there, but super glad to be back, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Cheers!